Hello friends. Wakeman here. I am very happy to see an increasing number of people exposing some of the current events created by satanic narcissists. Each day more people wake up from the delusional spell casted upon us and start learning the importance of the love of the truth from God. Waking up from such a satanic spell is difficult because it challenges with cognitive dissonance. After all we have been programmed under MK Ultra and toxic chemicals to numb our discernment to find the straight gate and narrow way towards truth and salvation. Remember friends, what these creatures truly desire is our soul by convincing us to give up our relationship with Jesus Christ. That way, they can offer our soul to Lucifer, believing they will be compensated for their satanic ritualistic works. For any individual to enter the kingdom of God, it is necessary to use a gate. Why is it true that so few find this gate? One of the meanings of the word find is to come upon or discover by searching or making an effort. To find something requires some effort from the person who is searching for it. The gate and the way represent the same thing. The context here is that many people choose the broad and easy way but very few choose the narrow and difficult way. The broad way has a wide gate and the narrow way has a narrow gate. Jesus is the gate and the way to heaven. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. John 10, 9. God bless you. Please remember. Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. Hi, my name is Chuck Swindoll, and I wrote this. And before we get going, I just wanted to mention to everyone the reason why I did this. I think a lot of people really wonder why these people act like this, why these people sacrifice children, why they are all pedophiles, why they worship a demon, basically. And, and I think that there's a lot of people that are not okay with just the answer of, well, they're just sick, or, well, they're just um, psychologically deranged, which they are. And, and I, I wanted to present some substance to what they're doing and why they're doing it, because there is a real biology behind this. There is a real science behind this that they are taking advantage of. They, there's a real understanding, a fundamental understanding of human beings at every level, body, mind, and spirit. And these people have capitalized on the information that they have had for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. These, I mean, I'm going to get into it here, but these slides are going to help folks understand just how pernicious these people are. Ruthless. They are ruthless hunters. And they are completely self-consumed. I mean, totally self-consumed. And there's no saving these folks. These folks are dyed to the wool, Luciferian Satanists. They have completely given themselves to this cult. And there's no, there's no turning back, and they never will stop. And so the best thing we can do as human beings is we can educate ourselves as to what they're doing and why they're doing it. Because you've got to understand and know your enemy if you're ever going to overcome or defeat your enemy. You, you absolutely have to understand them fundamentally. And so, because I never see this kind of information on the uh, internet except in just, just sporadic pockets that I've been looking through for years and years now, I thought if I could put it all together in a way that I understand it, maybe it'll help a lot of folks. And the best thing I think everyone can do is just take the whole of what I've written here and just consider it. And that, I guess, is a good place to start with this warning. Uh, this, this recording isn't for kids. This recording, uh, this is going to frighten children, and it's going to really challenge, it's going to have some challenging words in it. So there's no gory pictures or anything like that. It just, it's really difficult words to hear, and it, it's not for kids. Okay, so the slide content is here. I'm not going to read every one of these. The reason why I put those there was that if some of this stuff gets too heavy or gets just over the line for you, just skip to the next slide. This isn't a book. It, I didn't make this like you would make a wall or learn math. It's not one thing builds upon the other. You can actually read these slides individually, and they, they pretty much stand on their own. Now, I've grouped the ones that are of similar content together, obviously, and so those are the ones that are a number of different slides, but then there's also a number of them that are just a single slide that 
that will hold its own. So if there's anything that you just can't tolerate reading or just is too much for you, especially when we get into the 20s, just skip to the next one because there's some really good information about the biology of ritual murder and then the appropriate human response, which I think is applicable to anyone, no matter what you believe, no matter what, you know, if, if you're a human being and don't like killing and murdering and, and hunting down children, you would, you would go along with the kind of thing I'm going to say at the end of this. Slide one. The purpose of this essay is threefold and strewn throughout this document. One, expose the Luciferian cult, the science and biology behind its human sacrifice rituals, and the psychology which drives them. Two, expose how Luciferians have influenced the West since the beginning, and how that relates to number one. Three, offer a self-responsible, internally driven response to rid of these parasites and the red herrings they have foisted upon humanity. Slide two, life eats life on this planet. That's the way it works around here. Trees grow greenest at the cemetery. The slowest gazelle is caught first and feeds the lion cub. The forest fire brings forth new growth. The death becoming life reciprocal is one of the most difficult truths to accept in all of nature. We are natural conscious creatures, so we are aware both life and death is within us. Yin, yang. This raw aspect of ourselves must be accorded or it will become a source of anxiety and the mind will become vulnerable to false impressions. This essay is a study of Leviathan, the master of false impressions and the people who worship it. And I'll just make mention before I go to slide three, that middle uh, sentence there, or a few sentences, that there's a great DVD by Joseph, Dr. Joseph Campbell called Mythos. It's a DVD set. And he really helps folks come into accord with this life and death principle that we have within us. Jo Dr. Campbell does an, an outstanding job of helping people come into accord with that without having to believe anything, but just through your own innate understanding. Okay, slide three. There is much concern these days about Luciferianism and child sacrifice due to the emerging discoveries of this heinous activity rife within the ranks of global banking, political leadership, and the Vatican. All realms of power on earth take part. It's time we dissect this human consuming belief system before the Luciferians take over the planet and with them human potential. Ask yourself, was it really a fruit Adam and Eve ate that day in Eden? Or is the story referencing something much deeper in the human psyche? Further, is the version of Eden taught to you the actual story or is it a red herring? The Luciferians have their version of Eden and I've never heard it put exactly like I do, because I have not heard or read a person yet who has connected the dots like I have. So maybe my thoughts about this stuff will act as a serendipitous, disenchanting agent for our planetary plight. I'll say this, hearing the Luciferian version of Eden for me was in fact an experience of Satori. It clarified their lies, it connected the dots, and most importantly, it helped to explain their extremely anti-human motivations and behaviors throughout history and even today. Slide 5. Luciferians have run the world since organized human history began. They have been steering and shaping the planetary cultural vector since long before the United States, Rome, or even the Egyptians. This cult goes way back. It's also known as the Old Religion. They have maintained direct contact with a fourth dimensional being known as Lucifer for thousands of years. Lucifer is a parasitic, genderless phantasmagoria. It has been anthropomorphized into human recognizable forms and names throughout time and all over the world. It and a legion of other fourth dimensional beings like it have been pilfering the human race since the beginning. Luciferians communicate directly with Lucifer through the ritual practice of child sacrifice. This practice to evoke and convene with Leviathan originated in the cult of Baal. Baal is just a name for Leviathan or Lucifer or Moloch. These are all referencing the same energy. The cult of Baal, which is the oldest cult ever established on this planet, is the ancient precursor to Luciferianism. Luciferianism, I personally consider, simply a formalized and highly organized cult of Baal. Slide 6. Luciferianism is both a religion and a bloodline. 
Satanism is a lower echelon of Luciferianism for those outside the bloodline and wealth prerequisites to qualify as a true Luciferian. Money can buy you into the Luciferian cult, but only bloodline accesses leadership. The highest ranks in the Luciferian cult are not voted in. They are bestowed rank through female genetic lineage, carefully steered by the cult, through select breeding within the blue blood family lines. Like a king's executive rulership is bestowed to his firstborn son. It's a similar idea in Luciferianism, but like the Jews, it's the female who carries the genetic that counts. Luciferians involve 13 plus one hidden royal bloodline families. Instead of just one family ruling like an imperialist kingly monarchy, Luciferians have many at the top, so it's a bit more complicated and integrates many more ranking members. There is much disagreement and infighting and personal agenda between the families, but they all follow a singular agenda, and that is to control and rule the planet. Here's a list of the families. You're going to recognize a number of these. Astor, Bundy, Collins, DuPont, Freeman, Kennedy, Lee, Onassis, Reynolds, Rockefeller, Rothschild, Russell, Van Dyne, and Merovingian. Slide 7. The Merovingian line is the most secretive of all the Luciferian families. They wield the most power as they carry the purest satanic genetic. I'll refer back to that throughout this slideshow. The popular artist Marina Abramovic claims to be from the Merovingian bloodline. In fact, she outranks Bill Clinton, who is actually a Rockefeller. Names are changed in Luciferianism to hide the true identities of the individuals, or virtually every name in U.S. Congress would be one of those 14 families, and it would be obvious a coup has been pilfering the USA since its inception. More information on the families can be found in a 1995 PDF by Fritz Springmeier titled Bloodlines of the Illuminati. It is available for free on the internet, and I highly recommend it. It's 300 pages, so it's not a short read, but it's really good. Luciferians trace their bloodlines back all the way past the Amalekites, who practiced in these same cannibalistic human sacrificing rituals. Bloodlines are desperately important to these people because the blood carries Lucifer's energy. They must keep the genetic pure from us normies, quote unquote, who are not from the blue blood line of Satan. Understand these child murdering cultists believe they are direct descendants of the bloodline of Cain. As in the book of Genesis, Cain and Abel, the twin sons of Eve. As we all know, Cain murdered Abel. Slide 8. Luciferians believe Lucifer was literally the father of Cain and Adam the father of Abel. According to them, Eve had intercourse twice that day, once with the demagogue and once with a human. She became pregnant with twin boys. The key obfuscation in the biblical story is Eve's boys had different male progeny. Lucifer was the first to have intercourse with Eve and then Adam. Luciferians believe the line of Cain, this is really critical that you understand this, folks. Luciferians believe the line of Cain carries the original genetics of Leviathan. Not a Leviathan, the Leviathan, meaning Satan itself. They believe physical sex is essential as physical action carries with it life energies and motivations captured within the DNA, just like consciousness. Consciousness is the sine qua non of human biology. So unlike Abel, Cain did not inherit living DNA from his father. He inherited dead DNA from a demon. Cain was missing the human aspect from his psyche life force. In other words, Cain had no conscience within his motivation to action. He was like a lion or wolf, a ruthless killer with sharp instincts to hunt down and kill without remorse. Cain carried a predatory proclivity inherited from his father, which was not anchored in compassionate counterbalance like his brother. The core of a human heart is love. That's probably one of the most important slides in this entire slideshow. Slide 9. Luciferians do not foster the compassionate aspect as love is absent from Leviathan's DNA. Satan is not human, so its seed did not offer natural human DNA to match Eve. 
This is why they foster a bloodthirsty, deceiving, sadistic characteristic of themselves. Humanness, the compassionate aspect, is abused out of them and replaced with deception. They identify with Satan through a lack of compassion, lack of humanness, playing deceptions upon the world. They take pride in this. The murdering, death-craving, controlling attitude of Cain is regarded as the supreme motivation to action, not love, not compassion. The more greed, the better. The more lies, the better. The more pain, the better. The more sacrifices, the more power inherited. They believe Lucifer's blood flows through them, so demonic qualities are to be nurtured. You see, folks? This is why they do what they do. Slide 10. Like the Gnostic point of view, Luciferians believe a demagogue, Lucifer, created the world. And like an agnostic, they believe the originator, God, ultimate reality, the that which is no that, to be an unknowable force past Leviathan, past time, past space, past any tangible reality, non-reality that can be cognized. So the originator to them is irrelevant. Do as thou wilt. It's one of the verses in the Satanic Bible. Do as thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. The apple in the Eden story is a metaphor which hides the secret of eternal life and has nothing to do with sin. Human intercourse creates an eternal being, and Lucifer informed Eve of this by beguiling her in the garden to usurp her human power for its own demonic agenda. The old term beguiled infers a sexual type of machination. So Eve, beguiled by the demagogue, willingly engaged intercourse with it. She then took the secret informed to her by the serpent to Adam, and Adam then willingly partook. Notice how the entire human procreation education, according to Luciferians, began with deception. Lucifer beguiled Eve so she would willingly give herself away. This is seen as fair play with a natural law to the Luciferians, since Eve was complicit. She chose to engage, and so the demonic act was in keeping with natural law, as both parties were willing. As far as Luciferians are concerned, responsibility rests in all complicit parties. A drunk can't blame the booze. Slide 11. Luciferians consider themselves as separate and above the rest of us since the moment Eve conceived. They alone have carried the bloodline of Lucifer, not us, so they are here to carry out a satanic agenda all the way down through time. They truly feel it is their duty to rule us ruthlessly, just as Satan, their father, would. They have documents showing the authenticity of their ancestry. What do you think they store in the Vatican archives besides information like alien species, the time of the origin of the earth, the true beginnings of human beings. Likely, the Eden story is a metaphoric red herring they pose to keep us from ever finding our true origin. Not knowing one's origin cripples self-awareness, and psychological development is impoverished. They know this about humans. They pray through counter-human attributes like betrayal, deception, lies, and theft. Inhumanity is driven in through systematic, organized, MKUltra-esque ritual abuse of the children within the bloodline families. The idea is to abuse out the humanness, compassion, and bring forth the Leviathanic, deception, aspect of their DNA. I hope that makes sense. Often children are hidden and passed between family members to be abused and programmed by others in the cult. Kathy O'Brien outlines types of abuses they engage in her book, Transformation of America. Slide 12. Ritual abuse, biologically, is a systematic destruction of neurons in the brain which postulate human characteristics. Through abuse techniques, Luciferians systematically burn out neuronal pathways in the brain responsible for human characteristics like compassion, love, authenticity. This is why a Luciferian can rape and torture a child. It's because the human aspects of their brain have been obliterated through systematic abuse. They, no, they have no capacity for compassion. They basically are a form of serial killer. To understand this, consider a child that is raped by a neighbor five times a week over a decade. 
that child will have very serious neurological disorders because biologically, neuronal pathways controlling behavior have been over-exercised, burned out from daily trauma. It will take years for that individual to regrow and rebuild appropriate behavioral pathways, and some portions of their brain will never fully redevelop because the actual neurons have been physically burned out from the voltage of trauma pushed through them. And that's in a very real biological sense, literally burning the brain out. That's what, that's what they do to their children. It's unbelievable. Slide 13. Luciferians have blueprints to carve the human psyche into certain behavioral consistencies from specific pre-planned abuses. A veteran Luciferian family can and will perform abuses upon a child, which they know cause behavioral dysfunctions the cult can exploit. This is why they have introjected certain types of spiritual belief systems into the world because they know how people will respond to self-inflicted mental trauma. Guilt and spiritual suffering cause a culture to be developmentally compromised and therefore easier to understand, know, control, and manipulate. Slide 14. To continue from here, you're going to have to think outside the box they have put you in physically, mentally, and spiritually to grasp the level of deception these people have achieved through history. Realize, folks, these people are living and serving an entirely different reality than you. It does not matter if you don't believe this stuff. They do. And they will continue their plan to dominate the planet, keep it satanic, and remain in full control if we do not wake up. That's our responsibility. No one is coming to save us. We must save ourselves from these parasites. They will hold their position of authority over us until we all wake up and discover what's really going on to put a stop to their agenda. The awakened cannot be unawakened, and they know this about us. Awakening is our greatest asset. That's why it's their greatest fear. We're like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. We have everything we need already to change the situation. Slide 15. The more convincingly the Luciferian can lie and deceive, the more cunning a predator they consider themselves, and the higher they are regarded in the cult. This is why major superstars that pose to fund humanitarian aid for tragedy-stricken islands are actually extorting a natural disaster to make money. How many houses were built in Haiti after millions were given to aid? Luciferians embezzle the money, exploit the people on the island by selling their kids and women into sex slavery, and then bid off the exceptional specimens for ritual murder by the wealthiest Luciferians. Years later, they built hotels on the island in the name of commercial growth, only to use the hotels as off-the-grid child sex grottos for the elite to rape the inhabitants of the island without any fear of getting caught. Despite what they portray, they are that depraved. I'm telling you folks, there's no limit with these people. It's do as thou wilt. They regard the entire episode as a cunning stunt played on us, the cattle. As we donate to their con, we offer permission to carry out their scheme. We are complicit because we support their narrative even though we don't know what we're doing. We enable the con because it would not happen without our participation. This is all fair play to the Luciferians just in the same way as Eve was fair play to Satan. Can you see the pattern of deception? Leviathan has taught them well. Slide 16. Understanding life in this sense gives a much deeper perspective of the game they are playing as opposed to the game you are playing. Not understanding begets fear, so they have kept us in the dark about everything, so understanding was not available. We are caught in an intended ignorance. Knowledge is power. If we are deceived because of their lies, they simply are playing a more cunning game, and so they inherit control through our enabling of it. Nature is merciless. Our only option is self-responsibility, because if you get caught in a way of thinking trap, only you can get yourself out. Nothing outside of you can be responsible for you. Fervent prayer may be good mental exercise, but it does not unlock the trap. Physical action, paying attention, learning, awareness, these unlock the trap. Until we wake up, the situation will not change. Luciferian power rests upon deceiving us into belief and then acting out upon a world they suggest while distrusting the one we actually experience. It comes down to that, turning the human mind against itself until mental rigor mortis sets in, and development 
stops. Humans must defeat themselves to be defeated. Slide 17. I've read and heard lectures from satanic priests and survivors of satanic ritual abuse like Jay Parker, Kathy O'Brien, and Mark Passio estimate 600,000 to over 1 million children per year are destroyed by this cult in allegiance to Lucifer. How can this be possible? Well, maybe because the FBI does not keep track of missing children. Which is interesting, because the last time I checked, the FBI and CIA basically track everything. From what we text, to who our friends are, where we eat, where we sleep, what we drive. But none of those agencies track how many children go missing each year. Does that make any sense to anybody? That doesn't make any sense to me either. So where I shower and where I work is more important to the FBI and CIA than human offspring? The evidence supports yes, since they do not keep track. And that's the issue. They don't care about us. We are cattle to be deceived just as their father has taught them. Because if it was official, one million children were disappearing each year, we would revolt. And they know this. As far as Luciferians are concerned, your kids are their next happy meal. Slide 18. Fourth dimensional beings feed on the electromagnetic energy humans emit. The same electromagnetic energy an acupuncturist accesses with stainless steel pens to invigorate natural force to heal the human body is the same energy these insidious creatures crave. We are morphic resonance imbued with consciousness, and since satanic beings are parasites, they seek to consume us. We carry precious, beautiful, perfectly balanced life force which they do not and cannot contain. In this way, you are assured you are not a demagogic being, as the Luciferians insist. You are imbued with an energy a demagogue, namely Lucifer, cannot possess, and therefore could never make manifest. In other words, a thorn does not bear grapes. This is your assurance of identity as a conscious, natural being. You are more in accord with a metamorphosing butterfly than a fourth dimensional being. Don't buy their lies about you. Nature's bounty is your yin-yang inheritance, not a curse. Do not be deceived, fellow human. You are not and never were a wretch. Slide 19. Leviathanic creatures do not have physical form like us. They are phantoms, shapeshifters. They can manifest themselves at will and are not bound by three-dimensional laws of space that hold us in a state of tensioned splendor. They see humans as something to devour, nothing more than fodder for consumption. They are pure darkness, and this emptiness lack drives their craving for our life energy. They do not contain potential nor seek from life in ways that we can and do. We are a drug to them. Leviathan seeks only to consume. It, not God, is the jealous one, because Leviathan cannot experience the radiance and fullness of life as we do. Slide 20. Understand the universe is infinite, and therefore infinite possibilities are inherent to it. This includes differing organizations of life in dimensions outside our own. To assume we are the exclusive form of life in a perfect universe of infinite size and potential is short-sighted, especially when considering the maths composing infinity. These fourth dimensional beings are merely a predatory species roaming the universe looking for an opportunity. They found one on this planet. To consider Lucifer as the concretization of all evil within the universe is to continue a Luciferian lie while inferring respect that is not due. These parasites want us to think of them as an overwhelming threat since threat introjects fear. Fear compromises human will. They know this about us. Consider what would be more satisfying to Lucifer than to deceive humankind by their own self-driven fears invented by Luciferians. While you think about that, consider this. Lady Liberty in New York Harbor is actually a monument to the female god Isis, the mother of Osiris, as in Egyptian spiritual lore. Osiris is the Egyptian precursor of Jesus Christ, which is why in Christianity, like in the Egyptian myth, human sacrifice is the transmogrifying ethos within the belief system. The cross is a plain demonstration of human sacrifice worship, yet counterintuitive justifications have been canonized to disguise the obvious. We are surrounded by their deceptions. To the Luciferian, all of creation is a desecration of the originator, ultimate reality. The earth, 
the universe, all that is, is but a tarnishing of the pureness of the originator. As the Luciferian sees it, life is a celebration of impurity. The cattle, all of us, are to be a living sacrifice to the celebration of impurity principle they embrace through Lucifer. They are here to rule us into an inevitable self-destruction which they orchestrated, instigated, and are seeing through. This is why wars throughout time have been global manipulations, not chance occurrence between enemies. Lucifer, the creator of the universe, in their belief, is a principal manifestation of impurity. Therefore, life is a celebration of filth. Think about that. So in the Luciferian mind, everything is reversed. All values, all missions, all motivation to action, the overreaching conception of what life really is, what a human being is, what the universe is, all is opposite to what you believe. Slide 22. As the movie Dune proclaimed, Fear is a mind killer, and it indeed is. Sin is a mind control technique. Ancient Rome knew about the public what Satan knew about Eve. Humans can be endlessly manipulated if they are complicit in the controlling mechanism. Judaism, Islam, and Christianity are all master control mechanisms. Western religion controls masses of people by limiting their potential through fear because every Western religionist knows they are a sinner and cannot be trusted. That's called inculcated fear. Convince a world they are all sinners and they will never allow themselves to experience any other kind of reality but that of a sinner. And therein is the con, because victory over sin is a pyrrhic victory, since it only exists in your mind. Sin is a hustle which frustrates human development in the universe. It's a Luciferian fear technique to developmentally compromise prey, which is us. Believe you're a sinner, and you'll act it out, live, and die as one. As Ram Dass wrote, if you think you're free, there is no escape. Slide 23. We all have electromagnetic energy pouring out of us because we are a wellspring of physical and spiritual power. As we age, life experience shifts the color spectrum of our electromagnetics from clear white like that of a baby, to all the colors of a rainbow. And so each torrent of electromagnetic current surrounding each human being is of a unique color signature based on experience, life attitude, and the surrounding environment. Our electromagnetic energy can be magnified when experiencing pleasure, but it's especially charged when we experience pain. When a human is under greater and greater levels of physical pain, the electromagnetic energy coming off the body intensifies, more pain means more vulnerable electromagnetic energy. Slide 24. Just like we transform physical elements like bread and water into mental energy, these fourth dimensional beings transform our electromagnetics into fourth dimensional louche. Louche is a slang term for electromagnetics as food in a usurping, raping sense. Lucifer and its minions are extremely attracted to our electromagnetics, our louche, because we contain natural earth energy while holding a large potential of consciousness. See, it's all contained in electromagnetics. Children are most desired because they carry the purest louche. The longer a child can be kept alive under greater and greater levels of pain, the more louche can be pilfered from the child. The most amount of pain for the longest period of time is attempted as this increases adrenaline load and electromagnetic output. That's why physical torture is an essential part of the satanic ritual. The sacrificing agent must be brought to a high energy output to satisfy Lucifer. Think of humans in terms of commercial production of meat when attempting to grasp how they see us. We are merely cattle to them. Slide 25. A fully possessed, experienced, skilled witch can keep a child in unfathomable pain for extended periods of time before the child finally passes out or physically succumbs to exhaustion and dies. By providing a living child to Lucifer as a sacrificial gift and bond, worldly power is bestowed to the witch. As the child is dying, their blood is drank by the witch. The ultra-fresh, warm blood of the child provides an enormous physical energy boost enormous sexual arousal, large volumes of anti-aging constituents, and a massive drug pleasure state similar to heroin. 
This is all due to the mass of adrenochrome, sympathetic biology, flowing through the blood of the child due to the pain they endured. Often Luciferian rituals climax the moment just after the child is murdered. All participants share in the blood drinking, and a huge group orgy commences. It does not get more disgusting than this, folks. You're going to be exposed to a group who has made human deception, torture, and consumption a lifestyle. And they are everywhere. Mark Passio, a former satanic priest, claims the number of these lunatics in America tops 30 million. And you wonder why they had to instigate an entire child procuring system. Here we go, folks. Fasten your seatbelts. Slide 26. The greater the pain being endured, the more adrenaline is manufactured by the adrenal glands. Children hyperventilate from the constant screaming due to the intense pain of the torturing procedure, so their blood becomes laden with oxygen. The high levels of oxygen pushed into the bloodstream from the lungs oxidizes adrenaline in the blood into its highly metabolizable form known as adrenochrome. Adrenochrome is a chemical asset of our sympathetic autonomic nervous system. The human body can instantly metabolize adrenochrome since pure adrenaline has been partially metabolized by oxygen via oxidation. Blood becomes saturated with adrenochrome as the body attempts to provide the sympathetic biology necessary for a fight or flight scenario, which the child is enduring. But there is no escape for the child. The witch consumes all this biologic energy as they drink the blood directly from the child's body while the blood is still warm and pumping. Adrenochrome almost instantly breaks down into useless compounds in the blood once the child's heart stops. So the blood is best consumed right before the moment of death. Meaning, the child is alive and aware the witch is drinking their blood as they die. The jugular in the neck provides highly oxygenated, adrenalized blood straight off the aorta via a quick stab to the neck and a deep bite. Vampirism is very real. Sorry to tell you that. Slide 27. We were born imbued with all the natural force we need to heal from this parasitic infection. It's called conscious awareness. Awareness is realized through the self-responsible act of knowing who you are, which is exactly what the Luciferians do not want you to ever realize. Because if you did, you couldn't be controlled. You couldn't be manipulated. You couldn't be brought into fear. Human potential is wielded not through beliefs or control mechanisms, but through a knowingness of and an identifying with oneself. All potentials rest within you, and therefore, us. Humankind must save itself because the only way is through. That is the way of natural law. Nature, which is all that is, has everything necessary to maintain equilibrium. This is why it is so important for each to wake up so the nature within the collective can equalize and bring forth balance. The heart guides and shapes the collective through each individual gift and inclination. We create our own destiny in this as individuals and so as species. Each must do their part for balance to be realized. If we do not awaken to our truth, Luciferians will enslave us all to their bidding because nature is merciless. A self-limited consciousness will be devoured by a limitless universe. We all must recognize and therefore experience the limitless truth that we are to save ourselves from these parasites. Truth can take any pressure applied. Truth always prevails. Be it. <laughs>